Okay, everyone is ready to go. Hi. Let's first, I, want, I always want to do this first because it's fresh on my mind because it's fresh in my mouth. It's fresh in my heart. Okay, methodical coffee. That is our coffee of the week. Let me actually hold that up here. Love this coffee roaster. They are out of Greenville, South Carolina. What comes out of Greenville? My f good friend Rory Scoville, he comes out of Greenville. And Methodical Coffee, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, maybe other stuff, but I don't know. I drove through there once on my way to Atlanta, and I stopped in at their flagship. The coffee's excellent. I had a couple of shots of espresso because it was that good. <laughs> I was also tired, and I was driving from North Carolina to Atlanta, so I needed the energy. I've loved their stuff for a while, and they're on Drink Trade, which was a no-brainer. I just clicked Boom, send me an Ethiopian. And that's what this is. This is an Ethiopian Elala. The notes, citrus, floral, tea-like. You know what? I get each and every one of those things. You know what I like is that they kept it kind of vague. You know, they didn't get too specific because then you start like hunting for, you're like, is there mandarin orange in here? Am I tasting it wrong? Is my tongue broken? And then floral, I don't know if you can get specific with floral, right? Is it just like, you know, rose petal? Is that a floral thing? Is it like, what counts as floral? I have no idea. But yeah, tea-like for sure. I complained a little about the uh, some of the previous coffees where it was like too, way too tea-like and it just felt like I was drinking a cup of tea without any of the, like the oomph, the f that coffee gives you the ugh. So this one has, ugh, that should be a flavor note. It's like E R R G H. I've had seven cups of this today. That's why I'm acting like this. <laughs> no, I've had I've had a cup of coffee and I went to the gym and I had a light lunch. So I feel like and my back doesn't really hurt that much today. So I feel like I can go conquer everything. The bag. I, here's a uh, another example of a good uh, design for a coffee bags they send out. It is basically a sketch watercolor uh of whatever flowers these are and that's great you don't really see a lot of that in coffee roasters and their uh design it says enjoy methodical on the side in cursive and then on the side it says a place to start adjust to taste and then it gives you basically a breakdown of how to use the coffee, how much for each method, coffee maker, French press, pour over, or an espresso. Uh, little details like that I like, because I would actually look, I'd go, well, I mean, do I, how many grams should I be using? And then their recommendation for a pour over, 21 medium, finely, medium to finely ground coffee for a 350 gram or 12 ounce brewed coffee. That actually is exactly what we use so that works out espresso i it says use 18 finely ground grams uh i do 18 to 20 so that's yeah no complaints on on this coffee if you want a good pretty light roast coffee that is a little on the citrusy side with strong notes of tea and then there's like i, I mean when you s are smelling it before you brew it it's got like a little bit of like milk chocolate going on and there's maybe like a touch of that like at the beginning maybe not in the aftertaste the aftertaste is a little bit more citrus slash kind of floral in that range but it's a good light roast and it's got like it's got a good good body and i could drink a couple cups of this and in an afternoon and and not really like tire out on the, on the taste of it but one of my favorite coffee roasters on drinktrade.com and i'm not going to sing their praises until they start sponsoring these but this was this week's coffee methodical coffee roasters out of greenville south carolina and ethiopia alala recommend would do it again don't know if they'll have it again because they do change things up over there at methodical they had to fly to southeast washington state walla walla 
is where I went. I don't know if a lot of people know where that is. It's like one of those sort of, there's a couple of wineries as a, a small mountainous college town. I know it exists because an uncle of mine used to live there a long time ago and I'd never been until two days ago. It's really pretty. It's like a pretty small, pretty comma small town and a pretty small town. And it's got like the things a college town would have. There's like some breweries, a couple of coffee shops, like a kind of old record store called uh hot poop <laughs> and it's a record store slash musical instrument store it has everything it feels like you walked into like the 1970s or 80s and it's been around since 1990 but you know it's just it's just a it's just like one of those funny dumb names um it would have been almost no, maybe it wouldn't have been better if they called it hot shit, but hot poop is kind of fun. And it did get me to double take. I was like, what could this place be? And then, you know, the photos are all musicians. So you put it together pretty fast. And not that if there weren't photos of musicians, I was like, oh, a place that sells fecal matter that's warmed up. Uh, anyway, I went in there and that was, uh, that was cool. They had like a lot of, uh, a lot of good musical instruments and upstairs was all drums and downstairs, huge guitar section. All the employees in there were like 50 and they had a big like CD and vinyl section. And it was like a good mix of like older people who were coming in there specifically for, you know, some, something for their musical collection. And then just young people going like, oh yeah, my parents used to go to these places. And they just look around thinking like, what could I possibly use from here? Like there was written all over their faces, but they were just like, yeah, this is like a blast from the past type place. Anyway, made me feel ancient. Went to a wedding that also made me feel ancient. Uh, my cousin got married and he's about 12 to 15, 10 to 15 years younger than me. There were a lot of people that were older, but then there were like a lot of people that were like young, late twenties. You could see it in their like face and the way they dress. And I was like right in the middle. I'm just like a 41 year old guy. That's just like there with a suit, just like hanging out, you know, not that people were talking about like young people stuff that I couldn't understand, but I don't know. It, it just felt like, and also it's kind of weird, I guess, being 41 year old, not married person at a wedding. Cause like even all the younger people were married, you know, like a lot of them, I think. And it was really nice that it was at like a sort of winery hotel kind of resort type place, like right outside of Walla Walla. And you know, it was really beautiful. The wedding was great. It was like, it was, it was, it was fun. I'm glad I went. Um, it was just like the, the flying there and back. Like it was one day. I was there for one day, but like the flight there, door to door, 15 hours. And then same on the way back. So I was just like, I can't really hang with that like I used to. But it's just, I was like, I, and my back was killing me on the flight there. I was at a three and a half hour layover in Salt Lake City. And I now understand the people that you see, you look down and there's just someone lying on the ground, flat on the ground. And you're like, sit in the chair, you know? It's probably because they have a slip disc like me. I now understand because I had to do that. I couldn't walk around anymore and I didn't want to sit in the, the chairs at the at the gates. Or, they're, they're the worst. And so I just needed to not have my spine be compressing. And Salt Lake City was like, it's like it's not a big airport, but it was like kind of empty and it's like clean you know so i go to my gate and i just laid flat on the ground sort of out of the way and use my backpack as like kind of a, a pillow and i laid down on the ground for an hour and 45 minutes and that was on the way to the wedding and that was the only relief i could it honestly felt great i was like should i just do this at every airport i might be that guy i might start laying on the ground at the gate bring some pajamas Get a pillow, like a full-size pillow, not an airline neck pillow. Blanket, bring a TV, cup of tea, like a whole bedroom. Hi, uh, can I bring my mattress? Can that, can that go in the overhead? Anyway, it was, uh, it was tiring, man. It was really tiring, but I made it. And I'm glad I did because we don't have a lot of weddings in our family. And I don't know, that is what it is, I guess. But it was nice to be like, to see, to see my cousins, see my uncle, my aunt, 
And it was nice to just do something different. You know, I, I rarely ever go to weddings. Family weddings never happen. And it was nice to see my cousins, you know, and just see them as like adults and stuff. And they're like doing their thing. They're living their lives. They got like jobs and they have now, you know, one of them's married and it's probably, he's probably going to have a couple of kids. And, and his fiance now wife is like really nice. And it was just like, I don't know, it was nice to see. And it was nice to like sit with my uncle and my aunt and just sort of talk about like family stuff. And when you don't see a lot of your family together in one place, you forget that you have sort of a dysfunctional family to some degree. A lot of it was like, you know, my brother and I were just praying that our aunt didn't go to the wedding because we have an awful awful aunt. She's the worst for a lot of reasons. I should probably shouldn't get into like a lot of detail, but she's just like a selfish psychopath, dramatic nightmare person only thinks of herself and just, it doesn't care about, I mean, anyway. And, and then also never thinks she ever did anything wrong. And it's just constantly the victim. She's the worst and probably was, is the reason my grandma's dead or died early. Um, I if I went from, I probably shouldn't get into details. So like here's all the details in 30 seconds. And if I never see her again, I wouldn't care. My brother and I were just like, oh, please, God, don't be at this wedding. And it was looking like she wasn't going to come, but then it was looking like she was. And then she's always like three hours late to everything. We were like, all right, maybe she'll want to come, but then be so late. She'll get there after we've left or whatever. So she gets there like a little over halfway through and was sitting on the other end of everything. And my uncle was, gave specific instructions, like don't get near me or my you know, immediate family. So I just kind of hung out near them because I'm like, I know she's not going to come over here. And I just didn't want to get into conversations about, you know, family and this and that. Because it's, what's the point with someone like that? Who just doesn't, is not going to hear you. It's all about them and their selfish needs and how they're the victim. And, you know, I, I just didn't want to do it because I was enjoying my time this at this wedding and stuff. So I talked to my uncle and my aunt a lot and... It's cool because I, like you get to find out stories about your family that, you know, your parents tell you the stories they tell you. And sometimes they'll either have forgotten things or they won't bring things up unprompted or they will withhold information because they're protecting you when you're younger or something like that. So they won't tell you like the and, you know, and my family comes from like, you know, a war torn country like they left because of civil war so there were a lot of details they weren't going to get into at thanksgiving when we're 13 or yeah i just heard i heard some stories about how rough they had it and it really sort of reminds you how how rough the world can be and how close it is to your own family and it was so close to being my life if they never left if they never came to america like i don't know i mean i maybe i wouldn't even be here what if they all died in like you know some explosion somewhere in beirut i mean it's possible war kills people and my family luckily was able to get out of there barely with nothing it's wild and yeah just hearing like how how they grew up and just with with nothing it just it made me so much more grateful to have the family I have and be where I'm from and know that they just sacrificed so much to get here. It was, it was really something. And it's funny that we're having these conversations at like a wedding with all this like celebration and new beautiful things moving forward. And we're talking about just like despair and, you know, <laughs> but that's how, that's where it all started. So it makes you in a way more appreciative of it. I decided to start like digging more into my, uh, like where I came from and where our families all came from because before there was a Lebanon, you know, there was just territories and land and different empires and things. And, you know, so when people say, oh, I'm from Lebanon or Syria or Jordan or Turkey or Israel or all these places, it's like your nationality is that, but where are you and your family and extended family, where are you like from, from and where, what, what are your people? You know, Lebanon hasn't even been a country for a hundred years. Neither have a lot of these countries. I'm starting to do more research. I want to figure out where I'm from, where I, what I am. Cause it'd be cool. You know, when I was younger, I didn't want to know. I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to be like the white kid next door is what I thought mattered because it was a mostly white suburb. And that's where all the friend groups were. And that's what everyone looked like. And no one judged those people. And I thought that was normal. And I wanted to be that and fit in. And But there was nothing there. You know, there was just like a facade. You know, a lot of times when you go into those houses, you realize like, oh yeah, they're just, these families are fucked up like everybody else. There's nothing special 
special about this. It was the one connection I saw to cool pop culture kids and like MTV music videos. It was like these white kids dress like Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Nirvana and Pearl Jam are cool. I wanted my uncle to be like Eddie Vedder or something like that or just have that look. But now I can be like, yeah, dude, this is my uncle right here. Some brutal emperor in the Assyrian Empire or whatever that like took over just swaths of land and carved out new territories with an iron fist and severed heads and hung them in courtyards and that's my great uncle that's way cooler anyway so i want to like get into that and like and and know all that the one annoying thing that happened on the way back so i'm boarding my flight i had a connection to salt lake city on the way back too and i'm sitting there people are, are being sat and i don't know if this has happened to you and i want to know what you do if if this happens to you you're in your seat i'm in a window seat which is my preference this couple comes up and they're like is it okay if you switch with us so we can sit together? Is that, we just, we would really love to sit together. What do you guys do when someone says that? Do you go like, oh yeah, I'll just, yeah, move to this middle seat for this entire flight. And so you guys can hold hands for the flight. I don't, I just say no. I just say, no, I, 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 I just, I, I need to sleep in this, you know, I can rest my head on here. Or like I got work to do and I can't really sit in the, you know, I just make, I make up something. And, and sometimes when you say no, they go like, Ugh. they get like upset. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Do you mind if we, do you mind if you move to the worst seat on an airplane so we can hold hands and be together? Oh, that's what you mean by switch up. Uh, Wait, this flight's going to, oh, Salt Lake to New York. Oh, yeah, four hours? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, you guys might not survive if you don't sit together. This relationship might be doomed if you're not together for four consecutive hours. Because, I mean, to be in the same room and not be next to each other, that's basically adultery. <laughs> sit apart for a few hours, like... What are you afraid to have your own thoughts or what are you worried they're going to have their own thoughts? And then the plane lands and you're like, it's over. <laughs> First thing you say to each other, I was in a middle seat two rows back and I met the actual love of my life and it's not you. I almost want to be like anyone that asks, do you mind if we sit together? And I'll be like, how long is this flight? And they'll go, oh, two and a half hours. And I'll be like, if you guys can't make it through this flight, sitting two rows away from each other. You don't deserve love. I want to announce that in on a plane in front of people and then see what they say. And then see if they, are you sure you don't want to switch with us? And then they'll just, instead they'll go, sorry, sorry, sorry. Or break up on the spot. Do you need to sit next to your like significant other? Like, do you, if you had, I wouldn't, care i'd be like no oh, bummer we can't sit together i and then that'd be the end of it i'd be like well i guess i'm gonna fucking sleep anyway on this flight are you sure i've never been more sure of anything i don't want you to sit next to each other i'm the anti-cupid i'm here to end your relationship by not allowing you to sit together i've never once done it and i've been asked like a half a dozen times and every time I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Cause I know it's not a, a real need. It's not going to help anybody. If you were like, oh, my elderly, my 117 year old grandma is flying to have an open heart procedure done. And the survival rate is 1%. Do you mind if you, can you switch so we can sit? I'd be like, I will take another flight. I'll walk to New York. <laughs> That's what I'll do for your 117 year old girl. Even though that is probably like, yeah, it's not going to, but you know what? Have one last flight with your 117 year old grandma who will probably die mid flight, but still that's the whole point. But you and your, we need to be together. No, no break up now. Take another flight. Don't even take the flight. Break up. Go find someone else. That's your vacation. Your vacation is from each other forever. But look, that's that. I am happy you're here. And subscribe if you haven't. Okay? Check out the Patreon. That's the, what keeps this thing alive. Uh, go check out those tiers. Get stuff. You get free shit, dude. 
I mean, you know, not free, but it's like stuff that you get while, while subscribing to the Patreon. And then there is free, like free episodes and stuff like that. Also, this is my stand up special right there. It's on YouTube. Also free. That's actually free. All you have to do is click fucking subscribe. That's the only thing I ask of, of anybody click the subscribe and then, you know, like it or comment or do something on it and then watch it and enjoy it obviously before any of that and um with that being said i will see you in hell like subscribe and comment don't be a dick